you know, hey, I'm working. This is, you know, this is how you know, this is how we make money. This is yes. this is my job. But also, I like, you know, I love it. Like I would be like I'm having fun doing it. So it's just yeah, like, yeah, it's just that's like, it. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Jesse Nyberg podcast. Today, I'm here with Jim Madison, super talented designer, screen printer and artist. And we had a little technical difficulties, but we're all good now. Ready to go. How are you doing, man? I'm doing good. I'm doing really good. How's your kind of week been so far? Um, it's been okay. What is today? Today's Thursday. Um, I did yeah, do, I, I, I released a new print uh, yesterday. So that's something. And I'm, I don't know. I'm just, I, I really don't know what I'm doing, but I did release a new print yesterday. And uh, today I kind of worked on some stuff and ended up doing artwork for another print that I don't know mm. when I'll print print it. Okay. So. Yeah, I've been like yeah. super into your work ever since I discovered it. And I really like watching um, like your process and everything. And I, I was kind of interested if you can tell me a little bit about how you first got into design and like how you, when you first learned screen printing and stuff like that. Oh my God. Okay. Here, here's a couple like disclaimers. Like you might have to, like sometimes I get like, I'll like uh, go off on a tangent or something. So you might okay. have to bring me back. And most of the time I will not answer the question that you asked. Uh, so just right. so you know, this is our first time meeting. So I just want to, so, you know, if you have to be like, Hey, whoa, stop. And I'll do that. Okay. But okay. When did I start? That's what you asked. Right. When, yeah. when I started um, in high school, I started uh, screen printing. I had a really uh, cool uh, art teacher um, who turned me on to always, uh, you know, I knew about Andy Warhol. I, I saw his work, but mm -hmm. he really uh, thought that I would, I don't know what would make him think that, you know, make me kind of like study Andy Warhol. So I did got into silk screening and then, um, like that would say like that was like freshman sophomore year and then junior year at the end of junior year he asked me what i wanted to do and i said i want to uh you know silk screen i want to do mm -hmm. you know learn about that so i actually started in like 1988 in high school so nice then after that i went there's a college here um western kentucky university i live in bowling green kentucky by the way um and uh went there and um took uh took um went to college for a little while and then got into printmaking not mm -hmm. so much silk screening i was really into lithography and then i just got burnt out after about three years of that and then just decided i was just going to start doing silk screen prints so there's mm -hmm. that and then in the, in that that's when i met connie and uh, we started uh, print mafia so and then we did that for uh, I'm at Connie's house right now. So uh, uh, we did that for like 20 something years. And then wow. we went our separate ways. And then now I'm just doing what I do. So, and I will add okay. Connie, you know, Connie and I are still very close and all that stuff. We're still buddies. It was just, uh, it, it, it ran its course and um, it was, uh, I, I don't know. It's, 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 it's weird. It's like, a, it's like, a, I miss it, but, I, but, but also like, I don't miss it, but I do, but then right. I don't. So yeah, it's you, always um, like, easy yeah, to it's, look it's back on stuff too. Yeah, know, like that. Yeah, yeah, and it's just, um, it, it's it's just uh, so like when I do my Instagram videos, if you watch any of those, mm -hmm. I will I'll often talk to Connie through those videos, uh, just because my whole process, mm -hmm. um, like learning how to design over those over those years, working seriously like right across from someone. Yeah. Um, it's it's like i still need 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 that so connie is the one that i talk to all the time right okay that's a little history when lesson. uh did, when did uh the print mafia business like officially conclude like do you know what year um, it was oh gosh i do not know i i should know i don't know it's um, been a little bit though yeah yeah it's been like the the whole like and and you'll have to have connie on here so she can tell like her part of the story uh, too it's just it got to um we kind of i i feel like we kind of went as far as we could go and to go to like to keep it going to kind of go to the next level to be able just to do that um mm -hmm. 
we were probably going to have to deal with more clients than 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 I felt comfortable mm. with. I'm I'm I am I am impossible to work with. And <laughs> Connie and I built this friendship yeah. on we built our friendship through our love of pop culture. Just uh, like she Connie's just the coolest and 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 we just like connected on the way right. we like the way things look, you know, movies, music and all that. Uh, we just like connected plus like um you know being like you know being a female and a male like we just it just it just had a good um like we had just had a good rounded view on things Mm -hmm. um so i forgot what i was talking you asked when we ended um I, i i forgot what the question what did I see? That's where I got confused on what you uh, didn't quite answer it, but you gave me yeah. more than the an- the question. You gave me more than I asked. Yeah, for, so more information. Good. Yeah, I went You're off on good. a tangent. So yeah, I don't know the exact year we we stopped. Okay, I know what to say. So we built a friendship around mm-hmm. um, around print mafia, around printing, around um, right. all all that stuff. So and it's it's a very unique. I don't. I hope there's other friendships out there like this, but our friendship was, it's very, it's very unique. Like I've probably spent more time with Connie than, um, we're not going to talk about marriages and divorces, but I've probably spent more time with her <laughs> than I have anyone in in right. my whole life. Um, so, um, yeah, so we built that unique friendship around that. So, and then I lost what I was going to talk about, but, uh, I think maybe you get the picture, maybe. I I was curious too. You just told me about um, before you're talking about starting around in like 1988, I believe you said for the screen printing stuff. Yes. Has your process changed a lot or not at all from doing screen printing then to what you're kind of doing now? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so like if you're looking thinking about like 88, um, I wasn't doing any photo emulsion, any of any Mm. of that stuff. Now I I did take a uh, my freshman year of high school, I did take a um, a graphic arts class, and we touched on silk screening, and we did a little bit of photo emulsion. But mm-hmm. um, when I went to whenever um, I you know just got a screen and got some ink, and um, I just started cutting paper stencils. So I cut mm-hmm. a paper stencil, you know, lay it down and, and make prints like that. So I did that all through you know just those couple all that year, maybe a little over a year in high school and then when i started at western college that's when we did like photo like photo emulsion and all that stuff so so when i it has definitely changed but and it um i evolve just a little bit Mm -hmm. every seems like every print i evolve just a little bit but i still do things like i don't use a computer um i get my films made at kinko's uh, and just use a copy machine and exacto blades and and like that hasn't really changed much and but i will um you know when connie and i first started uh, we did develop ways of doing things you know like first we were you know like when we first did early 2000s we were cutting ruby lift for all the colors and then Mm -hmm. one day we just ran out of ruby lift so we cut paper stencils for the color and like the way it looked plus it was just like so much cheaper to cut the paper mm-hmm. stencils and and you always have like paper and exacto knives so so yeah, it did evolve i guess when because you mentioned to me when i first asked you to come on you didn't have a computer and i was like okay that's that's pretty yeah. like, unique <laughs> compared to most people that i know especially yeah. around a lot of people my age and stuff and i'm curious like what so when you so i'll see on your story some of your process and you'll have like your collage already made or you'll have different pieces of prints that you're putting together and to, to create whatever you're working on. How are you like printing that stuff out if you're not using the computer, at least in the very first step? Uh, just a copy machine. So, okay. so like all the, um, and, and I like to use the source material, like, like, uh, it's easy to talk about rat fink stuff. Um, mm-hmm. so, when I'm going to make like uh, like do a reproduction of a of a of a Ed Roth graphic, um, it's I've, it's best to work with the original water slide decals. So I will track those down. Mm. Most time, just like on eBay, 
track them down and then i'll just lay it on a copy machine and just make a copy and blow it up and did does, did that answer your question so i'm not yeah, like yeah. downloading and, and people can't you know however you get images is however you get images but i right. like to part of it for me and the thing like i'm going to keep referring to, to connie again and again through this okay. whole thing like you know we would go out and and sometimes we'd go on field trips together and we'd go to like mm -hmm. thrift stores and flea markets and look for stuff or you know and still to this day like even when i came over here to connie's house she had this this book i don't i don't, I don't think she had it for me to see maybe she did anyway i was rifling through her mm -hmm. stuff found a book and i was just like you know it's those kind of things uh you know i want the actual um source material so i'm not looking up like doing this and looking up an image and then using that um, yeah i want the actual source material plus old print when you start looking at the way you know like half tones and that kind of stuff like you know like uh -huh. print from like 19 you know let's say 1969 down is incredible for the way yeah. i you know it's beautiful. the way i work i guess yeah it's just funny to me because like um a lot of younger people that i know they um they are so like myself included are very fascinated with like this older process and a lot of the like stuff that inspires us and came out of this like screen printing and kind of like even like punk flyer scene like all this kind of yeah. stuff but then they're trying to recreate that digitally and like they don't even maybe know the original process of doing it with like the photocopy machine and yeah. laying it out by hand and then uh it's just funny how digital has come so far that we're trying to like make stuff look not digital in the digital form, yeah you know yeah i think and it's it's like um like i'm enjoying like as far as like i'm enjoying like i i you know like technology like like using instagram like meeting people like yourself and doing podcasts mm -hmm. and all that stuff for promoting but as far as like making stuff i just man i still just love like the actual source yeah. material and a and a copy machine um but there are um you know, there. I, sometimes when I'm doing stuff, like there's probably ways. Well, I do know ways that I could make it easier on myself if I did know. Now mm -hmm. I'm keep going back to Connie. Now, Connie's a little. She is way more savvy on on that end than than I am. But um, but like you said, she still knows the the cut and the paste. You know, like she has two copy machines. Yeah. I think I know she has at least. I think she has two copy machines. So, you know, she yeah, still I mean, uses I, both more. Right. I, I think though, like, um, your example of how you use like social media or technology and is kind of ideal because you use it to your advantage. Like you're able to, um, you know, have Patreon or spread your work or record your process. However, you don't let it, um, kind of interfere with your process and like mess with your mind because sometimes that's the worst part about technology is there's so much shit going on that it can distract you from the actual work that you want to be doing, you know? Yeah, I've, I have, um, well, I really enjoy like sharing the process and, and, mm -hmm. and making those videos. It's also kind of one of those things where, um, just working so long side by side with someone that, you know, when I'm making stuff, like we were constantly talking about, oh, look at this and this, and this is an awesome picture. Mm -hmm. And this is going to copy, you know, like I really uh, miss that. So, um, Instagram stories or when I make something for like the YouTube channel or whatever. Um, yeah, it's, it's really, I am having that conversation. Like, so, you know, Connie is, is, is Instagram stories, you know, like, <laughs> so like, that's who I yeah. talk to, you know, when I'm there and I'm sharing it and, and, and so, um, I've just kind of, um, like, I've, so I got some really good advice, uh, one one time about like using social media and all that stuff so the only thing i i one advantage i do have is you know it's like um the way i do things and who i am why i do it and and how i get it done so mm -hmm. you know i'm not like the best designer i'm not the best printer i'm not the best but i am the, and i am um how how can i break this down so if i tell my story destroyer. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. If I tell my story and and how I do things, like that's maybe what people will find interesting, and that's hundred percent. Um, yeah, that's that's kind of what has uh, has um, helped, I guess. So I've used yeah. the 
I've used the social media as that too. Plus, I'm just man, I'm just addicted to Instagram. <laughs> I know, but I'm also bad, addicted huh? to yeah. It, you know what I mean? Like it's just like looking at all that inspiration and then connecting yeah. with people and meeting people and all that stuff. And and it's just um, so I kind of if I'm going to be doing that, I got to kind of make it where. Um, I, my wife will listen to this Anna will listen to this but she'll understand like a lot of times i'm like you know hey i'm on here because this is my job but really right i kind of i made it my job but it's also not my job that makes yeah it's I a, just, there's a lot of blurred lines there with uh yeah and it like you you can it's easy to justify like that i'm working you know that's like it just talking to someone justify on yeah yeah it's easy for me to judge because like printing and making making stuff and cutting up little pieces of paper. Yeah. Like that is my number one form of entertainment. You know, I skateboard and love to skateboard, but I hate mm-hmm. to say, I mean, I do, I love printing and cutting up paper more than that. So I find it also right. like where, um, you know, I've made it to where I can make a, a little bit of an income from it and it can support itself. You know, hopefully that will keep going. But, um, it's also it's, it's it's weird because um and i like to get up early in the morning and i like to get started mm-hmm. uh some people are like you know i don't know how you do it you know da, 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 da. but i'm like i like i'm so ex- excited ready, huh? i'm ready like I, yeah. I like when i get up i'm ready to to get started now yeah, i do I agree yeah and you know and but the thing i do suffer from is um staying on track so like today, I, I today, um, I I put films together for a print I need to do tomorrow. But I, you mm-hmm. know, I put those film together and then I started a new print that I had no idea yeah. I was even going to do. And and I have some dead deadlines coming up on on a few things that I need to get. And I I know I'll get them done, but it I, I don't. What is it? I'm I'm kind of like last minute Jones on a lot of stuff. So. Yeah. I always see um, your videos on your story, like the morning ritual where you turn on the, the music and it's funny because yeah. hearing you talk about how you treat that like Connie or like a friend, it, it makes sense because the way you're talking feels like you're just telling me like, hey, check this out, you know, like here's this little thing, yeah. here's this, here's that. And yeah. what's your um, what's your morning routine like, like on a normal day for okay, a, a, a normal day. Now this will fluctuate, but... Mm-hmm. It, but when I get in a groove and really go, I like it, it'll stay consistent. Like I like to, I like to get started at three. So I get up at 3 a.m. Yeah. 3 a.m. And then I do like my house chores. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, and that's like whatever that may be, you know, putting up dishes or all that stuff. And it's like all, and mm-hmm. then I will, um, then when all that's done and everything's kind of clean, then I, um, Turn on some music, and I don't know what that noise was. Okay, now I'll turn on some music, and then um, that that's that's where the ritual starts, and then um, mm-hmm. then I just start getting to work. Now I like to be done by um, like I like to be done by three, working on stuff. Now sometimes I won't work all the way till three. Sometimes I'll just do just a little bit. But like if you wake up at three and start working, let's say you start working at four, you know by eight, I mean. Everybody's just now getting up and you, and sometimes I'm just done, you know? Mm. So yeah. the rest is all just extra, I guess. Right. That's, so that's, that I would knew, be a good um, day. Sorry, go ahead. No. And that would be a good day. You know, like that would be a good, uh, you know, getting to starting at three and then being done by, by eight, whatever I'm doing would be a good day. And then I have the rest of the day to kind of figure out, you know, yeah, do I need to, what I need to catch up on and, you know, yeah, I know yeah. people that are similar. They either wake up early or um, the opposite. They work um, very late because yeah. both of those things, while they're quite different and like it's a different style, they both have the benefit of your um, people aren't bothering you, right? Because no yes. one's going to email yeah. you at like 3 a.m. And even yeah. if you don't have to deal with that right now, it gets in your mind and it kind of it it leaves like a residue on your brain that you think you have to deal with something later and then it distracts you from your morning yeah. ritual and everything. Yeah. Yeah. You put words but together better cool. than I do that residue yeah. on your brain. That that's, uh, that's good. <laughs> that, I know exactly it's, what it like, you know, that's what I have. Uh, 
you know, I have uh, kids and, um, you know, and I'm married and I got a little dog mm -hmm. and, and it's like, if, if I can, if they're asleep and I'm working, I can get so much more done. Yeah. You know, even if it's just like little things like, you know, Hey, we're out of coffee creamer. And then I'm thinking, Oh, you know, it's like, Oh, I, that they need to put that in the schedule. Like that's something I got to go do today. Yep. Like who's going to go get the coffee creamer, you know? Right. So. Yeah. I, I totally agree when I'm a, uh, I work from <laughs> home mainly as well. So, uh, and my girlfriend, she works at a salon, but when she's, she works, the day she works is mostly when I don't work. Cause she's mainly on like the later end of the week and the weekend. So she'll pop yeah. in sometimes tell like, and then sometimes she'll lead with like, I'm sorry, I know you're whatever. And then I'm just like, well, you're already in here. That's not the, it's not about what you're going to say. It's the act of like the interruption that just, and now I'm thinking about, you just told me we got to go to the store later or whatever, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I know, and I know it's, it's like, and like I said, like I'm very difficult to work with. I'm very difficult to live with. Um, but like, it, it's that inner, it's like that interruption. And I feel so bad sometimes because like I'm working in the kitchen and our, at our home, you know, that's like, that's <laughs> yeah. where I'm at. So, yeah. uh, I don't know, Anna will come in and, and she will feel like she's interrupting me, which, you know, she is, but sometimes it's, sometimes I can handle it, you know, but sometimes like, you know, she'll come in at like eight, I'll be starting to wind, wind down by then, you know, so I can handle uh -huh. that kind of, well, we need to do right. this or, or, or we need to do that. Um, I was talking to Connie before, like, cause I'm, I'm sitting in her office and it's just so, it's so perfect. Like everything's like right here. There's so many things I want to touch over here, but, um, she, uh, the days I don't have to leave the house and like, if Anna goes, if I'm home alone, oh my gosh, those are the best days. And that's, mm -hmm. I'd really try to make it work so I don't have to leave the house. Like if I can leave, stay home for like two days, I, I can get so much done, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Cause, cause I, I, I also, I also like this thing is I'm trying, this is a, like the balance. Like I don't have a good balance so I can, um, there's this thing where, you know, if I don't, like if I stayed home for three days, I could do three, three prints and release three prints, you know, but mm -hmm. what am I going to do? Am I going to do that every week? It's right. I could, and I'd want to, but then it's like, it's just, just too much. It's too, it's too much. Mm hmm. Yeah, and then your other, uh, you know, it. There's only so much uh, energy, right? So you have, yeah, your your. If you have like 100 percent energy, right? Uh, you use all that up. You only got 20 percent left for all the other parts of your life. You know, it's gonna be hard to yeah. all the other stuff's gonna start slipping a little bit. Yes, I'm learning but, a lot I from mean, this podcast. <laughs> what you're teaching uh, me, Jesse? You're teaching me. No, you're teaching me, man. It's a mutual, a mutual thing. What, why do you say, you've said this twice now, um, so I'm curious, why do you think that you're hard to live with? What does that mean? Or like deal with or whatever, um, work with? Just um, like being, inter being interrupted. It's a huge mm. like character flaw. You know what I mean? Like I feel like, um, you know, my mom, so I'm like 52, I could be 53. I don't know exactly how old I am, but <laughs> I'm in my fifties. So I mean, <clears throat> sorry, I'm either 52 okay. or 53. So, um, like if, if, and so I'm like, my, my mom is, is, um, is, is older. So I'm having to do help my mom a lot more. So it's kind of mm -hmm. like, and she is going to call at any minute for anything. Like for yeah. instance, the other day I took her a gallon of Sherbert. And she ate it in one day and was called me and wow. was like, Hey, are you going to be out? You know, and, and can you get me this, you know, this, uh, this, you know, another thing of Sherbert and, and I'm like, and it just automatically, like I, it puts that residue or puts me in a, like where I have to stop what I'm doing, answer the phone. And then she's mm -hmm. going to tell me that. And then I'm like, Oh, I need, I have this, like this guilty thing. Like I need to, what am I really doing? Right. You know what? Like, like when's a good time to stop? Do I, need, but I don't want to start anything else or, you know, I'm in that. So I got to, uh, so I get um, that those things make me very upset. And, mm -hmm. and I think I show that like, um, I'm very, I get irritated easily so that it's just difficult to, yeah. to deal with, you know? 
Yeah, I think I'm the same way. I think we're similar in that sense. Like, and I sometimes, it's like a weird cycle because I get frustrated when someone interrupts me and then I feel bad for the way that I handled it because I'm like, what? You know, like what? What is it? What's so important or whatever, like something like that. And then not only am I thinking, oh, I got interrupted, but now I'm thinking like, oh, I'm a dick, you know, like that should have just said, oh, how's it going? Because either way you're interrupted. So I'm, I always try to think maybe I'll just be like, what is it, sweetie or whatever? Yeah. Oh yeah. Try to be nicer. Yeah. I just, I I just, I'm just difficult to be around, but it's, it's, I think we're kind of talking about the same things. Like when I get Mm -hmm. upset, I'll, I'll explode or something, you know, get, you know, and that this is the thing that it's difficult. And I know it is like, you know, I'm in my, I'm doing my work. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like, that's what will be like, you know, Hey, I'm working. This is, you know, this is how, you know, this is how we make money. This is, yep. this is my job. But also I like, you know, I love it. Like I would be like, I'm having fun doing it. So it's just yeah, like, yeah, it's that's just it. like, Oh man, I could only imagine, um, I don't know, like being a pro skateboarder or something. And, You'd have to tell whoever your partner was, hey, I'm going to go, uh, you know, I got to go skate, you know, but you're probably mm-hmm. going to go do that anyway. Yep. You know, you know what I mean? So this episode of the podcast is sponsored by ReadyMag. ReadyMag is an awesome online design tool that lets you create unique and memorable websites. ReadyMag is a great resource for client projects because it allows you to create cool websites using its intuitive drag and drop editor and without having to write a single line of code. ReadyMag does a bunch of cool things. It allows you to add advanced animations to your website with ease. Another way to make your website shine is you can use their cool draggable feature. This allows your viewers to move objects around the website. Adding the draggable feature to editorial landing pages and client websites makes them interactive and fun. The first 50 people to use Jesse 16 can try out the ReadyMag freelancer plan for just $16. Click the link in the description or use promo code Jesse 16 when signing up. It, it is and a lot of that has to do with me like getting my balance, you know, my balance. So when I do I do my best, but I definitely fall short of getting up, getting work done trying to stay on task is, you know, it's easier on days that I print because when I, when I print and I get up at three and I start to print there, that has an end, you know mm. what I mean? Like, like it's four colors. It's going to take this long and I'm, and I'm printing. So when I'm done printing, it's over when I'm designing, it's a little bit different story because I could yeah. cut this piece of paper up and I, and I end up doing three or four designs when I really had only planned on doing one and you know, I hope that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, the production like, side of things is always more. I don't do a lot of printing, but even just, you know, organizing like files or like the stuff that's more uh, uh, automatic, like you've done it a million times. It's not, yeah. it's, it's not as conceptual. So you're just kind of like doing it. That stuff's a lot easier to, I could listen to like a podcast or music yeah. and just really like do it like automatic. Yeah. Sometimes when I'm like concepting or the designing phase, I really need to like focus and I, it's cause you, every time it's different, you know, you're not, it's no yeah. system you can follow. It's like a new thing yeah. each time. You're right. Yeah. I'm learning yeah. a lot here. Yeah. I mean, cool. it's good. I, I, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm really like hearing, it's funny because it's, uh, I, I've said this before. It's, it's both like a good thing and a bad thing when I hear especially people that are older than me deal with the same stuff as I do because it makes me feel like, Oh, everyone deals with this. But then I also makes me feel, damn, I guess it doesn't go away. You know, you just can't yeah. stay like that for, for a long time or forever. It, yeah. It, it, but there's ways of, and you know, I'm, I'm a, a believer in therapy. I think therapy mm-hmm. helps, you know, and that will definitely helps. Um, and then also looking at other people, that are older than than me like 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 you said like i learn a lot that way then plus mm-hmm. um like my mom she was self-employed and and like watching her like go through her career and how she handled things um okay i can i can learn some things through her um but definitely older um i have a uh, one uh a friend that i talked to um Steven, he's older, older than I am. He's had a creative uh, career and, and 
he has a lot of good, like a lot of good advice on, on how, you know, like you just, you do have to, and plus, and then also I'll say like Connie is, um, um, you know, she's been with Stacy, her wife for forever while I have, mm-hmm. uh, haven't been with the same, uh, person forever. So she has a lot of good advice on how to, um, be nice and, and, uh, or handle that stress, I guess I should say. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's so, good. That's always, I need, I need more, uh, I need to talk to more people <clears throat> that have that advice because you get so, sometimes you think only about advice and like, you know, cre- creative stuff or your career or design or art or whatever, but sometimes it's good to just get advice on like being a human, you know, because you're that yeah. before you're any yeah. of the other, the other things. And, and the balance, you know, it's all balance, which I do not have a good balance. And then I, someone posted, um, another creative person said, you know, you do have to take breaks. If you mm-hmm. don't take breaks, your body will, it'll take one for you. And that happens sure. from time to time. Like I'll get, like, I'll just work, work, work. And then there'll be one of those days where I'll just have a horrible migraine or, you know, I didn't drink enough water like that day. Out, I just drink. Huh? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I get, um, I do get, I do get burnout, but, Mm -hmm. um, one thing that has helped me in, in, in staying like productive is, um, you know, have like monthly projects I do all like every, okay. Every Wednesday I do like this Bible study collage, um, Mm -hmm. just based on, you know, might be song lyrics, scripture or whatever. Um, right. So I do that every Wednesday. So I know I'm doing that Wednesday. So I know when I get up by 6 a.m., that's another thing I do. Also post at 6 a.m. Um, on Instagram at, at 6 a.m. or as close as possible. And then at 6 p.m. or, you know, or as close as possible. Um, the 6 p.m. one is something that's available. Most that's mm-hmm. something available for purchase. <clears throat> the 6 a.m. one kind of keeps me kind of um um like some kind of like schedule if 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 that makes sense cuz the one yeah, thing I about and I'm I'm sure you know this like if if you aren't hustling like if and and or being productive or doing something I can see um and a lot of people say you know you know followers don't matter da 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 da, da and maybe it doesn't but in my instance, if, if my followers are, if I'm getting more follows, more likes, more of that people looking at stuff, more interaction, mm-hmm. that means I'm doing something right. And I know when sure. I just take like a week off or whatever, it drops. And if I'm not doing yeah. something that is like um, new, it, it, um, I see it start to drop. Now, that that's not my motivation. Like I'm trying to get... But it does, you know, that number that those numbers usually mean that I'm going to be um, awarded or supported that I can do it again. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? So it, it it's I my benefit and it's it's in my benefit to but I still want to like I still want to do new stuff. Um, mm-hmm. So but also I do get burnout and I do kind of get like, man, I just like um like I just started this series and then I was really into it. And then, I, and, and then all of a sudden I just like, I, I didn't like really hit a wall, but I kind of got to where, okay, I need to do something different for a little while yeah. and come back. So, um, having monthly projects and then having that Instagram schedule, if you want to call it that, um, it, uh, keeps me motive, keeps me moving, even if I don't want to. And even like that, if I, say that like if you know and i'll tell that like i don't really like doing anything like but i'll start cutting a piece of paper and uh it'll go from there and mm-hmm. it's it's like one or two things and i don't know which is better like sometimes like i wake and i look at a ton of images like i'll have just tons of paper laid out i'll go through magazines and i'll look at all the stuff and i have no ideas all right yeah. so there's that one and then the other one is everything you look at is an idea i, I don't know yeah, which yeah. is worse I really don't know which is worse because it gets pretty like I have this box that I have. I put papers in and it's things that I want 
that I'm like, oh, my God, I got to get do something with this. The mm-hmm. oh, my God, I got to do something with this as soon as possible box is overflowed by like that much <laughs> off the out of the bottom of it. You know, it has a lip. Yeah. But then it's, it's every bit of that tall. That's uh, and it's almost like that 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 box just like looks at me and I'm just like, I want to I want to get to it. But then it almost right. causes this pressure. And I went off on a tangent there, but. No, I, I, I feel you there. It's almost like uh, they're the two opposite feelings, but they have the same result. It's like nothing gets done because you're either yeah. not inspired or you're too inspired that you can't even channel your focus onto like one yeah. thing, you know? I, I, yeah. I wanted to ask you um, about, so you do a lot of the, obviously the Rat Fink stuff and all yes. the, the Ed Roth things. And I noticed it says like, you know, officially licensed or whatever. Like how did how did that like, come about and how did you get like that permission or whatever like what's the what's the story there i I was in the right place at the right time and so it's a it's a big long story but but i'll try to like um i live in bowling green kentucky um Mm -hmm. home of the corvette if you're into the corvettes and uh they have a corvette museum well the corvette museum had a uh, this was 2019 i think um they had an ed roth show um, which I was very excited about and I went to, and then in that process, um, I met, uh, a guy named Mark Harmon, who is a, an mm-hmm. official rat fink artist. And, uh, he is from Bowling Green. I mean, he is from Kentucky also. And I didn't, I didn't know that. I didn't know that there was even such a thing. And so mm-hmm. meeting him and, um, uh, being there and find out, finding that out <clears throat> more or less led to me being able to become one so I, I just happened to be at the right place at the right time right time mm. and i just had um <clears throat> as what i do is differently most most of the rapping artists like they are um unbelievable like there's some amazing rapping artists that really good illustrators can do draw a rat fink do their version of a rat fink mm. um or all the other characters i am not an illustrator um, so I did, I did have a little bit of help. Um, Eileen Roth is the one that tells you, um, you know, allows you to be an artist or not. So I had a lot of help when someone explaining how I do things, you know, like mm. copying and cutting and pasting and making silk screen prints and stuff like that. So, <clears throat> so someone so like vouched happened. for you basically. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it was, a, it cool. was, yeah. Yeah, so I so I wasn't I was able to, well, this person was able to explain it in a really nice email how how I do things and mm-hmm. that I'm trustworthy, I guess, and and I got I got accepted, and yeah, I, I love mean, it. What you do with it, it's really cool because <clears throat> not only does it keep the integrity of the original art and the line art is just so beautiful already, you know, but you're injecting this like organized chaos into it with like the color and like making yeah. it feel a little like it's, it's already very raw and like punk rock but you're like you know doubling down on that like feeling yeah. and then also i'm sure there's like thousands and not millions of people that didn't know about the original like uh yeah art so you're like helping it's like you're remastering it you know yeah. like you're bringing it to a new like I've seen it more through you than I would have ever, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like just looking at the archives or whatever. So you're bringing it to a new audience, which is cool. Man, that, thank you so much. That's, that means a whole lot. Like that's, uh, <clears throat> that's what I want to do. I didn't know that is even so much how it was going to come about. Um, mm-hmm. I just, you know, you know, like Connie and I working with found images for, for, so many years doing a lot of gig posters for you know doing a lot of band posters and stuff and um i just knew i I just knew what i could do with it you know Mm -hmm. what i mean and it's also helped me so much because i talk about this all the time you know so like if i find like a really cool batman and i make a print and i still do these Mm -hmm. things i still uh you know what the all the other stuff all the stuff i do for rat fink is is like legit you know it's license everything else mm-hmm. uh not so much you know like i just yeah, did yeah. A, you know an at and all that stuff so you know i fly under the radar and a lot, a lot of that stuff but like 
I can't really like take that ET and like say if I didn't have Rat Fink, like like if I immediately start explaining my process or showing you my process and I had this eight ET, people automatically look at it and think, Oh, we're just ripping that off. You know, which mm. I am. <laughs> yeah. I am bringing something to it, but still it's not like it it's it's I shouldn't be doing it, I guess. Gosh, I shouldn't be right. saying these things. It's all right. But you know. I, 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 no, no one here is going to rat you out. Yeah. With here. <laughs> well, I have, I have like a philosophy, like, I don't even know if it's a philosophy. Like, um, I only mess with stuff that I'm just like really into, if that makes any yeah. sense. So I also say like, if I'm going to do something Star Wars, I'm going to find a, and, I'm, and, I, and I've got a Darth Vader that I'm just dying to use. It's in that box of, that's that tall. Um, yeah. from an ad that I bought that I purchased on eBay that, that, that I've never seen. He's like, oh, he's going to hold a pair of scissors. It's going to be really nice. But anyway, I've already got it built up. Um, but well, I forgot what I was going to say. I, mean, I can't like really like do anything. Oh, okay. So, so, okay. I know what I was going to say. So that's where if I do something for do a Star Wars something, that's where it's going to come from. I did, I did a little print with, a pillowcase that I had since like 1977. Yeah. So that's the kind of print I'm going to make. Now, it, it's still not good or whatever. It's still not. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't be doing that, I guess. But but if I wanted to make money, you know, I'd be doing a Grogu, you know, Baby Yoda, if you want to say, or Gro, you yeah. know, Grogu. You'd be doing like yeah. a Mandalorian something. or a, Now, I would love for Star Wars to see, oh, hey, you see what I see what I did, appreciate it, and then hire me to do something. That would be yeah. awesome. But and that's kind of where um some stuff has is as uh the the Roth stuff having to be able to promote that, to do videos of it and keep them on YouTube. Um and it has opened a few doors. Does sure. does that make sense? Like people see it and they're like, Oh, well, I wonder what you could do. He, he could do right, with it's like you're this proving the, the you're proving that you can do it before they have yeah. to like risk it. Yeah. Like, uh, do you know um, Jeremy Dean, the Jeremy designer? Dean. I, so I he do um, not. he does all this stuff with like um, Grateful Dead and like and then also all these other punk bands. And he did like yeah. all John Mayer's new um, art direction and the Dead and Company yeah. stuff. And so he used to have a bootleg Grateful Dead like merch. Like a lot of people, that whole scene is fueled by like you know bootlegs, right? Yeah, and. Yeah. He did these like weird collabs between like Grateful Dead and Black Flag and kind of combined like the punk and psychedelic because yeah. Greg Gein from Black Flag, his favorite band's Grateful Dead, I guess, supposedly. So like wow. he um, combined those two things and then now he has an official partnership with the Dead and Company like thing and makes all yeah. their real merch. So he did what you were saying where you do it, you know, uh, allegedly or whatever illegally yeah, under yeah. the radar and then they saw it and they were like he thought they were mad at him but they were like no we want you to make like let's just make this legit you know and do more stuff. yeah that that so it that could happen kind of you know? yeah well that scenario happened to uh, connie and i with with kiss we love kiss and oh, we did okay. a bunch of and and we just did a few hand <coughs> a handful of designs for them um mm -hmm. but yeah, it, it's one of those things, and, and uh, you know, often here it's better to ask for, beg for forgiveness than ask for permission. Yeah, like yeah. If I go and try to do, you know, like, I'm just not, it's not going to get anywhere. I've I've tried that. I've 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 I've, I've done right. you know tried that before. So, um, but you know, also, um, I think if I would have did some rat fink stuff and and then would have tried to come back around and be a licensed artist i know that wouldn't have worked i, I just know it wouldn't mm. have um but to each their own and that's i mean that's like i would love for a band to i, I would love for that to happen you know and and especially yeah. and other things like bands and like skate companies and all that stuff oh my goodness gracious just all that good you know anything that's got like a good classic uh or right. things that i like i should say you know yeah, I Taco mean, so Bell. many people I know in the more, I think what I would say is like the modern sense of this is they create like, uh, um, for music, a lot of rappers and stuff like fan art or like concepts, like, look, this is a concept for your album or your, or your, um, poster or this, 
you know, we made this toy yeah. that you could do. And like, it's all just fake and for fun. And then that turns into, um, they, they reach out to them and they're like, we want to yeah. actually make something. So I think, you know, if you don't have any, if like you don't have the permission, then yeah, like just try it. What's the worst that's going to happen? You yeah. Know? Either they don't yeah. care and they won't ever like bother you and you keep doing it or they think it's cool enough to actually, you know, make it like official. Yeah. 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 I just wouldn't, I want to work with like all the things I like, like vans and yeah, I said, well, ta I said Taco Bell, but that that's being stupid. Uh, just like be, good classic awesome, logos. Though. Yeah. Oh yeah. It would be, wouldn't that be awesome? Get Taco what, Bell what, what stuff inspires the you the most? Like what would you want to work with? Like, let's say like top three, like brands or bands or whatever you'd want to actually do something with. Um, Vans, number one. Okay. I would love to do a shoe, design a box, That'd you know, cool. like like that. And I'm gonna pro I'm gonna probably forget some stuff. Um, I, I would like to do uh like movie properties for movies I like. So let's just put movies, and then, but that that's a cop out. Okay, bands. Um, for some reason I'm just drawn to metallica like i want to mess with metallica's oh, okay. stuff but i just want to get my hands on some like puss head stuff and 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 I, I don't know i mean that's that would be cool to do some uh, metallica stuff like working with their archives stuff like that um, yeah and i don't know why metal i just for some reason it just i, I don't know why I, don't, I can't explain it yeah um, you just like it yeah and then um i would like to do like like skate like skateboard like i like do some more like some skateboards like either like santa cruz or pal peralta you know like yeah some my hands on that artwork like that. yeah yeah, yeah it would I've be cool doing... to see all the original like screaming hand stuff and the drawings and all the yeah. original screen prints and stuff. oh yeah yeah so yeah that's, i guess that's, that's cool. three what um so you don't use the computer. We are. We went over that. Yeah. What made you figure out or who and how, how's this question? Who and why did you, who got you into this and why did you um, do Patreon? Because that's more of a, even people that know how to do computers, not everyone's yeah. involved in Patreon. It's almost a, it's a more niche thing. So how'd you kind of get into that? All right. That is one, Patreon is 100% doc reed i don't know if you know doc reed he's a, an amazing designer uh i'll send you okay, a link to him, him. Oh, okay doc reed he's Thank he's you. awesome great dude I, and he's just a solid guy and and it's all his fault he told me about i didn't know anything <laughs> about it and he um he was uh i would see him like every year for like three years he was doing and then well the last year got canceled by covid but he's been over since then i think but um he just um we were just talking and he was telling me about it. Um, I was doing the, uh, the monthly collage. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I just make 11 by 17 collage and I just put it in with poster <laughs> orders. Now that's straight up from Connie. Connie did those for print mafia. So, um, I just ripped her off and, and started doing them for myself. And, uh, <clears throat> and I was talking about all the monthly things and he was like, well, you know, Patreon subscription. So that's how he, yeah. now I don't use the Patreon app the way you should i think you should it because it's not i felt like, like i can really only concentrate on uh like one like instagram is pretty much all i can concentrate on mm -hmm. i do a youtube channel just because a lot of people um want more uh like you know content like i would say oh how do you you know how do you shoot screens well go here yeah. Even though I don't think I've done one on shooting screens, but cleaning screens, maybe. Anyway, I can just kind of direct them to, hey, you can go here and watch. These don't disappear. So, yeah. Um, and they're longer. So I can really too, only, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I can only concentrate on one. Like I've tried TikTok. I don't understand it. I'm trying, but uh, just Instagram, I can stick with that. Wait, what was the question again? Doc Reed. Um, okay. 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 Yeah. I don't use Patreons. Yeah. I don't use it. Like I just took my Instagram audience to Patreon. I'm mm -hmm. not building any kind of audience or doing any kind of, um, and I tried a little bit, any kind of content on Patreon. I just use it just for 
hey, you sign up, and then it takes your it it handles all the financial charging of the yep. card, I guess. So, so you just, <laughs> it's almost just like a, a mailing list, really. Yes. Kinda. Yeah. See, maybe I should, yeah, and I'll I'll probably never get a website, but anyway, um, what was the second question? I forgot. It was about um, a computer. You kind of answered Patreon. them both. I just was wondering how you got into it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That um, that was it. Just Doc Reed. That's just, cool. That, it's all his fault. Yeah. He told me about it, and and I I like it. Um, the for, unfortunate thing is I have two tiers. I have one that's um uh, the Rat Fink thing. It's a slow burn. So it's like twenty dollars a month, and you get this little packet of stuff and i yeah. i like it i like doing it i like having it um but it's 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 like it's paper costs have gone up it's not it's like the the envelopes mm. are getting more expensive it's crazy how expensive things yeah, are shipping getting. sucks and shipping is is gotten up gotten out of control now the other one's like five dollars a month and you get all this stuff in an envelope and it's i break even on that i'd say yeah. but i just enjoy doing it and the people that i have done it there's like seven people that have been there since the very beginning so yeah That's i mean cool. it's just awesome and it's just cool like I, that has and what i've here okay <clears throat> now here's one thing i have done recently and it just kind of evolved is i've really gotten into doing like little mini prints mm -hmm. and and i put those little mini prints in a patreon some of those mini prints have turned into like 10 by 20 prints some of them have sparked a whole nother series of you know bigger prints and and i've kind of reused a lot of stuff and come up with like i've got this thing called destroyer design cult that i keep going back mm -hmm. to i got like um so a series called like maximum death and just and i've really gotten into like making like fake movie posters combining yeah other movies so i, I don't know it, it, all that stuff like i i would i don't i wouldn't be doing that if if it wouldn't have been for patreon and it took you know like 30 months to finally <laughs> come up with that to evolve right. into that if, yeah so and you don't need the like <clears throat> you were saying you don't use it how you should or post on it but yeah. you don't really need to because you're adding more value than like Tons of people I see that only put digital stuff. I have Patreon too. And like the, I mean, I, I think I offer enough value and it's worth it, but you shipping out, like seeing that you get all that like stuff, that's already yeah. like worth the whatever, three or 20 bucks, whatever the two versions are. Like that's already yeah five bucks, whatever. It's like five, five you, don't, and 20. you don't need to post cause you're already giving them all this real shit, you know? So yeah. Yeah. And it, well, thank you. And yeah, and it's just, and it, I have it, you know, I talk about it on Instagram stories. That Instagram and Instagram stories is my number one form of communicating, I guess. Yeah. So I wouldn't want to do, just bring it over to Patreon. I'm just not set up that way. I mean, I wish I could. I wish I could do all. I wish I could be a TikTok star if that's a thing, you know, and, mm -hmm. and there yeah. are some like crazy success stories for artists on TikTok, but I cannot uh -huh. figure it out. I cannot figure it out. And plus making a cool video, I, I just can't like, that's what I like about Instagram stories is it's just, uh, you know, it's just, to me, it's just a conversation, conversation that's happening right then. I'm not editing. Mm -hmm. It's just what it is. And then it just disappears, you know, 24 hours now. So it's just kind of like, you know what I mean? It's not like, you know, yeah. I remember every conversation Connie and I had, you know, years and years ago, you know, it's just like a real right. thing to me. It's like a real interaction. That's not, yeah, it's more organic and Patreon doesn't even have like good, um, good, uh, <clears throat> in terms of the software, like the video stuff sucks anyway. Like when I put videos on there, you have to make like a private YouTube video and then link it to there. Like they don't even let you post videos. So it's, it's yeah. not even worth bothering I, with it anyway. I think the way you're doing it is 100% fine. Thank you. And I could see that that sometimes I think like <clears throat> if it's if your app or something, if I notice that it's not good, then there's some serious problems. And that <laughs> that thing, yeah. like it's just like it's the way that it tells me if someone canceled or, or, or declined or it's just like I 
I have to really bad, every yeah. month I have to go through it. So I do. That is a little. Um, <clears throat> that's one thing that I don't like about doing. I don't like doing things that I don't like to do more than the average person. <laughs> like I do not enjoy cleaning screens, and I do not like screen cleaning day, and I yeah. do not like any kind of messing with, uh, you know seeing who paid see who didn't pay see who dropped off and all that stuff and and when did they stop doing it and i'd much yeah, rather just hard. just mail it, yeah just mail it all out and just you know i mean you got i got to keep up with it because i can't just mail stuff out you know <clears throat> right and i'm still i still can't figure it out because i have only like 50 i mail out like 62 envelopes right but i only uh -huh. have 52 subscribers so somewhere in there like i still can't figure it out like someone is getting some extra mm, that shouldn't flying be flying under the radar. Huh? <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> oh well, you know. Yeah, I mean, maybe I, I can maybe help you take a look at it one day. We'll yeah, see what's, what's going on with it? We yeah. don't want it. We don't want no people ripping you off. You know, no yeah. freebies around here. Um, I'm sure they don't even know. You know, I don't know. I, right. I just don't know. Sometimes it's too, just not, yeah, the card will cancel. They don't even know, and I have the message. Yeah, they don't even know because that did happen to like. Yeah. You know, and they pointed it out, said, hey, I'm not being charged for this. And I was like, oh, I didn't know that. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. So, yeah. One of the so they last things I, I wanted to ask you um, is that uh, what's um, so you've been doing this for, for a long time. And I wanted to see what's one or your best piece of advice you could give someone that wants to get mm -hmm. into screen printing or printmaking or any type of this analog printing collage okay. stuff. Um, oh, I could give a lot of advice, but I also have to pre preface, like I'm no expert at anything, but one thing that I would do is if, if it's just you and you're going to, um, like if you're just starting off and you want to, um, use your name mm. or like stay with a name, like don't, don't change it. Like that's, and then also like, you know, that little picture, is that called an avatar? You know, like the little picture, the profile right, that's picture on your or whatever. Yeah, profile on your yeah. Instagram or whatever. So, like, but not everybody looks at like, not not everybody mm -hmm. looks at. I think does the same thing that I do, but maybe everybody we're all the same. Like, so, um, the day you change your little profile picture on Instagram, that's going to be a diff. Like, I I automatically see know what you look like. Does that make sense? Like I so like a hundred percent, a hundred percent. I've had the smiley face for like four yes. years or something. Yeah. Five years. You just got to keep it, you know? So, mm -hmm. um, and so that's one. And I'm going to like tell your, uh, if you're going to use your social media and you're, you know, creative or whatever, like it's cool to just have, you know, maybe start another account. If you just want to talk about some of your favorite movies or some of that stuff. Yeah. Um, um so I would keep a schedule and don't change anything like names or any of that stuff like kind of where people can just recognize it like when they see even though like i you know i have like, like that little they live thing you know i don't own that i wish i did but i, I really think when people see that they automatically know yep bam that that's that that's my little thing so yeah um and if you're young and you're in school don't don't wait just start I, there's nothing that i can that drives me that i don't understand if i go to like a like talk at a class like you know a college class or something and they are asking mm -hmm. me about things on instagram or or how to promote like how to do this stuff and i'm like man if if you're asking me then <laughs> you know you you should be on top of it you know right so is that advice? Was that good advice? Yeah, that's good. Good actionable steps yeah. that everyone can follow yeah. fairly easily. And uh, I want to say thank you again for coming yes. on, Jim. It was really like great conversation and I had a lot of fun. Appreciate it. Yes. Thank you. All right, everybody. Yep. Check out Jim. If you don't already know, Jim Madison on Patreon, Instagram, all that stuff. And we'll see you next time. Peace all out, right. everyone.
I hope you enjoyed this episode and thank you again to our amazing sponsor, ReadyMag. ReadyMag is an awesome online design tool that works right in your browser and is free to start. ReadyMag is not only easy to use, but it has some awesome features. One of my favorite things to do on ReadyMag is add a custom cursor to your website. On mine, I even use my classic smiley face logo and that added custom ability really helps your website look unique. ReadyMag also offers an ever-growing collection of over 5,000 free web fonts. It's a great tool for typography lovers because you can really fine tune your text layout, which is awesome for us designers who obsess over typography and all of our favorite typefaces. The first 50 people to use promo code JESSE16 can get the ReadyMag Freelancer plan for just $16. This promotion lasts for only the first payment, so click the link in the description or use promo code JESSE16 when signing up. 